happy summer and greetings from the University of Vermont and welcome to our second virtual session for the summer titled Moving In and Moving On. I'm Charles Holm Tope and I serve as the Director for Professional Life here at UVM. It's very exciting time to be a UVM catamaran. We are building a true new resident experience here at the university. One that will, we hope, will educate, engage, and enrich your time here at UVM. This is where you belong. We are so excited to meet you in August and can't wait to have you on campus. During this event, we will be going over some important information to know about packing for, for college, moving to your resident hall, and getting integrated into the campus experience here at UVM. We will be walking through every step of the process, including connecting with your roommate, move-in times and dates, and what we recommend packing. We will also include details about one of the most exciting times of the school year, that's opening day. So starting off, let's go over some pre-arrival tasks. Before you come to campus, make sure you double check your move-in date and time in the housing portal. If in the housing portal. After this session, we will recommend reviewing our list of what to bring to campus and what not to bring to campus. You will find these on our website at reslife.uvm.edu. Finally, we recommend connecting with your roommates before arriving to campus. While it is fine to meet your roommate in person on move-in day, it can be convenient to coordinate with them prior to moving if you have plans on bringing items to campus that you intend on sharing or purposing together. To complete this checklist and find more resources, visit the link at the bottom of this slide. So, for, so this is an example of what you will see when you log into the housing portal. At the top of the page, you will see information about your residence hall, including the hall itself and your room number. At the bottom of the page, you can view the date and time when you are expected to move into your space. In the middle of this page, you can see details about your roommates, the most important of which is their net ID, seen here at the right side. Net IDs always proceed our email domain. So if you would like to contact your roommates, simply add at uvm.edu to the end of their net ID. On this slide, we have some frequent asked questions that we would like to answer for you. One, can I change my date and time slot? Because orientation schedule is determined by your moving slot, we ask that you please stick to your sign move-in date and time. Two, will my roommates have the same slot? Not necessarily. We recommend reaching out to coordinate with roommates if you are concerned. And three, what if my slot is at 2 p.m. and orientation starts at three? Don't stress. You will have plenty of time to unpack, settle in, and decorate after orientation. So now we would like to tra transition into talking about packing. We know that it can be daunting to pack for college, but if you plan, you plan ahead and think carefully about what you will need to be happy in your space, it will all go smooth, trust me. For this section, we will take a look at a typical room to show you what will be in there when you arrive to UVM. We will also be talking more about tips and tricks for packing. And finally, we will present a comprehensive list of recommendations. So let's begin by orienting ourselves to what your space could look like and how much space you will fit into your room. We will be, we are unable to provide exact dimensions of every room. So we recommend holding off on bringing that full time until you have, you have 
measure the room and discuss it with your roommates. In addition to your bed, your room will include a desk with a bulletin board, a chair, a rollerway set of drawers, and a closet completed with a dresser. Remember, furniture provided by the university must remain in your rooms. Removing it will result in fines. When it comes to subtle and less is more, you, you, you don't need your skis before Thanksgiving break, we promise. Keep it simple and, rem and your roommates will thank you for sure. If you cannot fit all of your belongings in the back of your car, it is unlikely that they will fit in your room. If you are moving from a long distance and really need to have all of those belongings on hand, consider getting a storage unit in the local Burlington area. And lastly, don't be afraid to hold off on purchasing some items until after you arrive on campus. This slide contains a list of stores in the Burlington area where you can find all of your basic needs. So in our first virtual session, Elias, one of our other cats, showed you around campus in our halls. And now he's back to present a list of items we recommend packing. Elias, take it away. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate it. For those of you who are not at the first virtual session, I'm Elias. I'm an incoming senior studying exercise science and integrative health. I've also spent two years in the residence halls, and I'm going to show you a few of our packing recommendations and also popular items for students to bring. I'll go through a lot of items today, but just remember, don't worry about remembering at all. Feel free to use this section as a checklist while packing, and we'll be publishing these lists on our other platform and our website in the near future. For this section, we'll be breaking down a packing list into seven categories. We're gonna go with bedding, school supplies, tech, hygiene, room, decoration, and personals. We'll also be noting some items that are more convenient to purchase after arriving to campus, rather than just bringing it up in a car. So to start, let's go with bedding. The beds in our residence halls are twin XLs, so just make sure the bedding you pack matches this size. Other popular items in this category would include a backrest, a pillow, a pillow the width of the twin size mattress, stuffed animals, a bed post shelf, and a bedside caddy. Moving along a little bit, school supplies. This is really gonna differ on a case-by-case -case basis. It's also gonna depend on your major and which classes you're taking, but for the sake of prudence, we've included items that cover many bases. For example, basic items would include pencils, pens, notebooks, and calculators. We highly recommend you bring a laptop computer as much of your schoolwork will be done in an online format. It's also worth noting that some exams require students to bring a calculator with or without graphing capabilities. So just be aware of which one you need. Other popular but non-essential, excuse me, items include planners, post-it notes, lined paper, binders and folders, rulers and markers. So moving along to technology, um, I mentioned the laptop and a laptop charger earlier, that will be key, but I also recommend you bring a cell phone, a spare phone charger, all the relevant chargers for additional devices you're going to bring, such as smartwatches, calculators, etc. And finally, we recommend packing a good pair of earbuds or headphones, which can come especially handy while you're studying, especially in a public place on campus. Other op optional but popular items would include tablets, styluses, a mouse for your computer, storage protectors, an external storage device, or an ethernet cable, which can join our wired network, just in case you're having any issues with the wireless network. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit here and talk about hygiene. We recommend a wide variety of things, and of course, this is all gonna depend student to student as well. Remember, laundry is free here at UVM, which is great. Um, you will, however, need to bring a bag or basket to carry your clothes, as well as laundry detergent. For the shower, um, we recommend shampoo, conditioner, and body wash, one to two bath towels, definitely some shower shoes, and a hand towel or washcloth for the sink. General hygiene items we recommend also include common sense sort of items like deodorant, toothbrush and toothpaste, floss, nail clippers, a shaver, feminine products, a hairbrush or a comb. And to stay healthy, we also recommend over-the-counter products. This might include Advil, Tylenol, Excedrin, Tums, Band-Aids, condoms, hand sanitizer, as well as any other required prescription medications. 
I would personally recommend a shower caddy as well. This will be great for transporting all your bathroom equipment from your um, residence room to the bathroom. Um, I can also recommend lip balm, tweezers, Q-tips, suntan lotion, face wash, tissues, and a perfume or cologne. So we're going to switch gears again and talk about the room itself. Now, as Charles mentioned, it's tempting to bring additional furniture upon arrival, like futons or couches or beanbags or rugs even. But we strongly recommend you hold off on that until you know the space you're actually dealing with. In the meantime, bring a tape measure if you tend on using intend on using the additional space that we provide. Storage bins are an extremely useful tool to bring, not only for packing and transportation, but it's also a good way to keep your items organized and secure once you're settled in. Uh, hangovers and over the door hooks are definitely useful for your closet space. A desk lamp can definitely come in handy while studying and a fan will help a lot with those early hot days, but don't stress too much because in my experience, it gets cool pretty quickly around here. But definitely a fan is a good idea. Other popular items that people like to have in their rooms might include a TV or a monitor and entertainment systems, a mini fridge, which many of you might have ordered already, a hanging closet shelf for the closet to put shoes, etc., a low power microwave and a mirror. So the second to last category is decoration. Now this is really going to depend based on your personal preference, but we definitely have some ideas to help you get started. It's most popular for students to personalize the walls. So to do this, I recommend bringing painter's tape or poster putty. putty. While it's tempting to use items like command strips and command tape, please refrain from doing that because you will probably risk damage to your walls. Students also love decorating the bulletin boards which are provided. I recommend bringing push pins or thumbtacks to pin items, usually pictures to it. Other popular items include posters, string lights, signs, tapestries, colored lamps, keychains, and maps. And lastly, I want to bring it to personal items. Again, this is going to come down to the individual, but we definitely recommend a few things. Number one, you should bring your ID, your wallets, bring your passport if you plan on traveling or if you just don't want to lose it. Any health insurance information or car insurance information to the applicable is also a good idea. Everyday items like a backpack and water bottles are certainly recommended. And being conscious of the weather in Vermont, when you pack in clothing, make sure you count for both hot and cold weather. Um, sandals and boots, raincoats and warmer jackets, athletic wear, these are all things that should be considered when deciding on a tire to pack. It's also going to depend on the semester and that sort of thing. Other common personal items include a lunch bag, a beach towel, recreational items like frisbees or footballs, and I personally recommend bringing a hammock. It's definitely a cool part of the culture here, and you'll see a lot of people hammocking. All right, so I've gone over what you should pack. Now let's talk about what you should not be bringing to campus. Exposed heating elements like lava lamps and space heaters, in addition to items such as candles or incense, that can be a fire hazard. Um, they are not permitted in the residence hall. Other contraband objects can be considered weapons such as survival knives, bear mace, and hatchets. Don't bring any of that. Um, if you have any concerns about any of the items you plan on bringing, just make sure you reference our list of disallowed items using the link at the bottom of this page. And that's about it. Again, the list will be posted, so no worries if you can get all of that. I'm really looking forward to meeting you all when you get here in August. And Charles, I'm going to bring it back to you. Thank you, Elias, for helping to shape the student experience before our students arrive here at UVM. We now know that transitioning to a brand new community can be daunting. We know from research that the first six weeks of getting used to a brand new environment can present you with some challenges. During the first six weeks, we have created a well-intentional well of events to help our students to take part in community here at UVM. We encourage you to be open with your peers about challenges you experience. Our professional staff within campus housing are always available should you need support throughout the school year. Our mission at UVM is to nurture the student wellness and success throughout the academic year that supports you. I want to tell you about several campus partners devoted to helping students throughout the school year. The Center for Health and Wellbeing, our Counseling and Psychological Services Office, and our care team are all designed to make you feel 
and have make you feel supported and also connect you with resources so that you can indeed be successful here at UVM. Parents and guardians can help with this transition too. Parents, consider your role on moving day. How can I how can you support your student as they navigate this new beginning? Help your student remain calm during move-in day. There is plenty of time for your student to get settled, settled in. Ensure that your student is fully engaged with orientation by being active. And by, by, by being active is one of the best ways to make the transition seamless. And finally, make sure you give your students space to allow them to focus on the transition to campus life. Students, once you arrive on campus and move into your spaces, we have prepared a number of welcome events for you to participate in. The on-campus day market is a day of food and fun where we bring the farmer's market to you. Come glow with us while we welcome you to campus life with a night of black light activities like glow in the dark mini golf. Join us for our field day full of games to introduce all first year students to UVM sports programs and facilities. We also will be hosting a campus wide movie night. Each campus will show a different movie complete with theme food trucks. These are just some of the events that UVM offers to our student body. So make sure you keep an eye on the social cha social channels to stay up to date for those for that info. We realize that these topics we have tackled this session are different for a lot of people. Now that we have reached the end of our program for this session, we would like to have you participate in a Q&A session. Submit your questions in the chat and I will answer as many as I can during, during our time this evening. If your questions does not get answered by me, we have a team of Res Life staff on site behind the scenes to respond to your correspondence in the chat. So I'm going to now um, look to the look to this group for questions that you would like for us to share more about um, during this time. So Charles, I have a question about addresses and how we're going to shift into that. Can you describe how residence halls will have their unique address in the mail rooms and et cetera? Yes, great question, Elias. So when you arrive to campus, um, each each hall has a unique campus uh, address to where you can ship your um, belongings, but also your mail throughout the school year. And so at the front desk, you'll be able to um, um, gain those addresses so that um, you can give those out to your parents, your friends, so that they can ship things to the university. And that can, that can consist of medication, Amazon stuff, anything that you believe that you want um, to be shipped to you. So again, each campus community has a different unique address that's unique for that particular hall throughout the school year. I have another question and it's about the move in time specifically. Now, should people be there right at the move in time or is it a window of time that they have to move in? Yeah, so in particular for CCRH and our athletic campus, we um, assign our students times to arrive on campus for many reasons. One, um, we are, as you can imagine, we are moving in close to 6,000 students here at the university. And so we carve out times and hours so that we can move into the campus community 100 students in that time frame. So it's really important that you really stick to your time so that we can get you in, um, checked in, you can move, you, move into your hall and then you, you can enjoy campus. So we really ask all students to really dedicate and stick to that time so that we can indeed have a successful move in here at the university. 
I have a question about move-in date and time. Some people are having trouble finding that information about the exact date and the exact time. Um, I believe it's on the housing portal, but where can you find that information? So true. So again, if students go into the housing portal, they'll be able to see their housing assignment for the school year and the date and time to where they should be moving into the to, to their homes. We will officially on August 3rd send out to all of our students who, who are living on their actual, um, again, their room um, for the school year, their date and time. So that letter you will get via email from our department and that will sh share with you that, that we are that we that we that we officially welcome you, welcome you to UVM. I have a question about orientation, and are there orientation activities for parents on move and during the move-in weeks, or is that only during parent weekend? Yeah, I believe our division of student affairs is also planning some activities for our parents. Um, I don't have their, all the details, but what we can do, we will get that nation and we can send out an email um, to our start, email to our students via Starres and share that information with, with parents. We have a question about our new learning community, the Gaming Collective. Could you talk a little bit about that and what it is? Sure. So we are excited to kick off a new game, a new LC Core Gaming Collective. And so one of the things that UVM is really big on is how do we celebrate the student experience here at the university? And we know that we want to engage our students so that they can indeed find their way, be proud and satisfied at UVM. So we're launching what is called um, Gaming Collective. And this is a national trend that's taken off throughout the country where many um, housing programs have implemented this type of, of, of LC. So essentially, in our G Man's Hall, where this community will be located at, there will be four um, big human, big um, um, gaming um, um, machines where students in those communities are able to utilize um, those games. And so we are purchasing those four those four games along with other games to support the experience in that community. There will be. In that community, a faculty member who, who will be teaching an actual course to really engage the students in that community. So we are really excited about what the experience will be like for our students here at UVM. So look out for that um, that, that 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 hall. I we have uh, I was over there today, and, and and I will say it's really coming along, and so we're really excited to introduce that to our campus community. All right. I'm going to do one more question before we wrap up here. Um, the last question I have in here is quiet hours in the dorms and is music allowed? This is definitely an important one, specifically for me who has experienced the residential experience. This can be a tricky one. Yes, great question. So I would say that one of the things that we that we truly value is that we want to build community here at the university, right? And so if community means a lot of things to too to, to, to many people. So each in our halls, there are designated times to where quiet hours will go into effect uh, in your hall. And we ask that our students really live by those, those hours so that uh, we're showing respect for our residents who live in those communities. But also too, anytime a resident be knock on one's door and ask for courtesy hours, we ask that students really um, cooperate with, the, with their neighbors to really support them. So it's about engaging our students so that they indeed uh, can feel celebrated in the environment, but quiet hours are just for that. It's it's to really set the tone for the community so that our students feel so that the community supports them throughout the school year. Thank you, Elias. Now, now, now that this session is coming to an end um, for this evening, if your questions was not answered by me or in the chat, please reach out to reslife at uvm.edu and we will be happy to respond to you via email. Please join us again at 7 p.m. on August 16th for our final student session called Living in Community. It's going to be an amazing experience, just you wait. What I know for sure is that you are joining an amazing campus community, one that is filled with lots of energy, purpose, and passion. 
UVM is a place for you. Find your way, finding your way and charting your own course will support you during your time here, here, here at UVM. As one of the oldest universities in our country, our campus community has a rich history of learning and spirit. I'm so excited for you to learn more about our community and how you can be a part of it during our last session. You will meet your RA along with our peer, along with your peers and breakout sessions in the community during that time. Again, we are just excited to have you be part of our community. Until then, go Cats and we'll see you soon.